take a seat. We'll begin our presentation. Um, if everyone would like to take their seat, we will begin our presentation. As you know, I'm Michelle Kowali from Lieberman Management, and uh, this evening we have Patrick Riker from Brat Rest and Johnson here with us, and we have Ryan Fleggen, and he's not the ex-president. <laughs> and they're going to explain um, the parking garage repairs that we will be starting in August. Um, we have Angela Dua from our office. She's our communication specialist from Lieberman Management, and she's going to videotape this so that those homeowners who weren't able to be present can watch the video and be informed. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Patrick. If you would like to hold your questions to the end of uh, the presentation, and then Patrick will take them one by one. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate Welcome. it. Um, first off, the presentation is not going to take that long. We're anticipating maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Just want to give you some background review. Uh, and most importantly, let you know how this project is going to impact uh, the unit owners and the residences, uh, residents of um, the association. Um, afterwards, um, Ron and I, were happy to, to stick around as long as you guys want. Uh, answer as many questions as you want. Um, make sure that as you guys leave here tonight, you are aware, as, as aware of the project um, as, as Ron and I are. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is you know, we're going to introduce the project team, um, why this project started, some of the water leakage issues that occurred over time, what the scope of the repairs are, the schedule, of course, um, and probably most importantly for you, what to expect. How is it going to impact you? Um, and then how are we going to communicate project updates, schedules, phasing plans, etc.? Um, you guys all know Michelle. Um, please be aware you guys are very fortunate to have such a, a wonderful property manager. She is um, one of the best communicators I've ever dealt with uh, in the property management business, so I'm very much looking forward to participating in this project with Michelle. Um, Ron Regan, he's the, the project manager at National Restoration Systems. They were selected um, as part of a competitive bid process. Um, just so you guys are aware, they were selected about three months ago and probably close to a year ago is when we actually started talking about this project. So this, this has been a long time in the making. Um, Ron has been instrumental over the last couple of months since they've been uh, selected and getting this project where we are today. We're very confident by August 14th we will be ready to go um, and everyone will be well aware of what's coming. Um, we are, I, I'm Patrick Reich with Rass, Rass & Johnson. We are an architectural engineering firm, been around for about 50 years now. Um, I, I work out of our Willowbrook office. We also have an office in Chicago. Um, you'll probably see either myself or um, Colin from our office on site maybe twice a week. We're not going to be out there. We, we have a wonderful contractor out there. We're not there to look over everyone's shoulders. Um, but we're going to be there to answer questions because as part of any restoration project, there are going to be unknown conditions, unforeseen conditions, that we have to make um, decisions on the fly to keep the project moving. Um, the association board members, uh, especially Martha uh, and Sybil, have, have um, you know, I, I'm sure that their, their salaries far, uh, <laughs> far exceed their work capacity, but you know, they, they've been great. You know, I mean, we, we have conference calls, we have meetings, they're always there. Um, you know, they want the best um, for the association. We really appreciate all the hard work you guys have put in. Um, and, and last but not least, Andy. Um, uh, and, Andy's been great. Anytime we need to get on the site, he's there. Um, you know, he, he's not the kind of person that we have to wait for a call back 24 hours later. He's checking his emails, he's checking his voicemails, and we really appreciate that. Um, so we, we really do have a great project team, and hopefully that um, can start us on the right foot and will we'll continue us on that same path. All right, so. Why, why are we doing this project? Again, like I said, we started about a year ago uh, and it's some nuisance, nuisance related water leakage that you know, has been there for a while. Everyone knew there was a problem, but no one really wanted to deal with it. Um, primarily at buildings one and three, and then you get, I'll, I'll show you some pictures. Um, building two, which is set back um, you know, along Central Avenue, um, there aren't any water leakage issues there. Um, it's just that you know, as you guys go through the reserve study process, um, the urethane traffic coatings that are, are within the parking garages, um, they only have a lifespan of about 
seven to ten years. You know, especially when you get in the drive aisles as well. Ron can attest to this. You know, sometimes you guys see some pictures. You know, they may only last four or five years. Um, and, and they're planning. The, the the association board is planning for um, you know overcoat um, projects of those areas as well. And we decided since we're already going to be impacting a large portion of the area near Building Two, we're going to take this opportunity. Uh, to perform a relatively inexpensive recoat at that area as well. And um, we'll show you what that means. So the water leakage issues at Building 1 and Building 2. This is Building 1, and we're talking areas right by the garage door. We performed some um, spray nozzle testing. Probably did about five or six different tests. Every test that we um, made, we, we, we had water leakage in the garage. It was pretty simple. Um, so we're, we're essentially starting from scratch. This is down there. Right here, this is litmus paper, water indicating paper, um, you know, down in the garage. You can see the streak marks around here. Um, after a relatively uh, moderate rain, you know, for, from what I understand, since the initial construction, there have been issues. Um, what we have found is that there are issues along the garage apron, um, at the um, entrance door, uh, at the masonry as well. Building three, very similar. Um, except we have some issues like this here, where you can tell from original construction. Um, that, that's a piece of CMU, cinder block right here underneath the masonry. So we know that that's not supposed to be there. During original construction, it should have been a continuous concrete foundation along the way. So we are going to have to do some foundation repairs as well. Here are some of the streaks that you see. Again, it was my understanding that these streaks and the water leakage issues have been around um, since uh, original construction. And we're going to try and go back, take out some of the areas that probably should have been addressed earlier on during the uh, construction of buildings and take care of it now. Um, this is probably the, the major concern right here. So this is the entrance garage below um, Building 2 um, along Central Avenue. So this is what we call the common area garage right here, because it's not necessarily below a building, it's below um, the landscaped area there. Um, so this is, you know, I'll, I'm going to just point this garage door in a couple pictures. Um, but going back, I'm taking a look right here. And so what we have at that location is here, and at one point, this is the traffic coating and this is bare concrete. The reason this is bare concrete right here is because that's a slab on grade. There's nothing below it except for dirt. The reason there is a traffic coating on here originally is because there's area parking down below. Here at this joint is the joint where the foundation wall below sits. So what we found is when we started our water testing at this level, water infiltrated this crack went straight down to the parking level below. And so this is, as you can imagine, if we go back here, you guys know that this is a ramp straight down. So every time it rains, there's some water that gets in. There's water that comes down straight below. My guess is there used to be a traffic coating right here, but over the you know eight, nine, ten years of the building, um, that it's been peeled away due to you know the thousands, tens of thousands of cars and trucks that have pulled through. Here's another issue: we performed some water testing as well. How do the drains operate? As you can see, the drains don't operate. Any water that runs past the drain has to go over a, a little mountain to get into the drain, and water just doesn't funnel down. Um, secondarily, when we did test the drain itself, the drain leaks, so it's probably a good thing water doesn't go in the drain. Um, this is another issue too. This is a, a, one of the columns. I'll go back to just show you. Here it could be this column, that column, you know, any of them down the line. This picture too, you know, we were trying to flood the area. We're just putting a hose down, seeing where water went, and you know, the water tend to pond near the columns. Um, and since there is no traffic coating up here, this is just a paint applied to the column. Uh, it's not waterproof necessarily. As water started to pond, water came down along all the columns that we tested. Um, you can see this. I'm not sure if have any of you guys seen this um, before down in the lower level of the basement. Martha has. <laughs> uh, you know, again, you know, I mean, most people who are parking on the upper level, you know, would never notice this. But this is a situation where it's been going on for many years. Um, and yeah, it's a nuisance. It's not the end of the world, but the problem is with all this concrete, um, you know, you can see the steel starting to corrode inside, and that's what we're really trying to avoid is a long-term issue. Um, that yeah, you can go back with an overcoat system because you know your reserve study says you know seven to ten years, but we want to address, make sure that the overcoat system does what it's supposed to do. 
Do we want to make sure that as part of this project, we're not going to get the same water leakage issues that we have now? We're not just doing it to make it look good. It's function over form, quite frankly. Um, and as part of that, we are going to be water testing throughout this project. So, you know, Ron and I have talked about some of the milestones that we're going to hit as we start performing repairs to make sure we bring the hose out, perform the same test that we did during um, our original investigation and make sure before we let cars back into the garage or before we backfill some of the materials by building one and three that we've addressed the water leakage issues. Um, so we go through some of the scope of the repairs, but building one and three, again, that's the south elevation near those garage doors. Um, if you guys look at these sheets right here, I have them printed out, but that's right here. This is blue in the screen. Right there, that's just right along the south elevation of building one and three, right by the garage entrance doors. Uh, so we're actually going to be demolishing part of the driveway. We're going to do it one side at a time. We want to leave a portion of it open so anyone who's further back into those areas, um, we're not going to have to remove your cars, but you're only going to have one way in and one way out at all times. If you're scared about doing that, I would say, you know, try and move out for that period of time, the week or two. Um, there may be times where you may be blocked in just because of the nature of construction. You know, we'll talk about it later, but if you have appointments, stuff like that, I wouldn't count on having a, a, a clear path in and out at all time. But the idea is, is that we're going to excavate one area first, fix that side, excavate the other area, fix that side, and then we're going to have some patching in the middle. Um, like I said, we're going to have some foundation wall repairs, some masonry repairs. We actually met on site today before this meeting to do some masonry matching, so we will have the same masonry. When you get done, you won't notice a difference. Um, below grade waterproofing repairs, again, that's where the leaks are coming from. We know that's above grade, we know it's below grade. Um, the louver repairs, the louvers were just stuck into the walls. Um, unfortunately, rain goes sideways if you guys ever watch Forrest Gump, so we have, to, we have to make sure that as water gets through those louvers, we can catch that water and bring it back outside. Um, routing and sealing some cracks, and you know, I'd be happy to show anyone our original report. You know, it's not secretive, but it's just a little primer. Um, some sealing joints along the door jams. You know, if you go outside and look at the door jams, you can see right in. We want to keep water from getting inside. Um, traffic coating near the garage doors. And then when we're all done with all our repairs, we're going to be performing, uh, you know, infilling everything with the soil, pavement, curbs to match what we had already. But again, we're going to do our best to try and make sure that we have one side of that garage open at all times. So we're only affecting a couple spots part of the time. Um, this shows, this is building three, it's pretty much the same for building one. So you can see the area, we're not going up on the building if you guys are on the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth floors, it's not going to affect you, it's really not going to affect any units, except it's going to be loud. You know, it's going to be loud, it's going to be dusty. Um, eventually you are going to have a giant pit outside right here, um, so be careful where you walk. Um, once this giant pit gets waterproofed and then infilled, you're going to have another giant pit on the other side. So again, you know, even when you're going in and out of the garage, you know, it's going to be very tight. You know, it's going to be very tight, and you know, I think these are only 18 foot wide doors. It might even be 16. So it's going to be very tight. If you have a big car in there now, it's going to be tough to get in and out. Um, this just shows the scope of work. Right, right here is the garage door, and so again, we're only affecting two parking spots: one right here and one right here. But again, anyone who's parking back in this area. Just understand for the time frame listed on this sheet, that's where they're going to be working in that area. So you are, you know, every day if you're in parking spot 34 and you have to get out, you're going to be dealing with construction going in and out every day. This just shows the extent of demolition that we're anticipating. So this right here would be where the um, garage door is. We're anticipating going down about four and a half feet. So that's why I'm talking about the giant hole. You know, watch where you step. It will be covered. Um, Nashville will do a great job of covering it, but you know, it's not meant to be permanent. It's not meant to be walked on. Um, it's just there in case of an emergency. Um, here's the, the bigger issue. This is where we talk about the main area as you're, you're going into the uh, um, building two garage. We call this building three common garage repairs because Quite frankly, um, when I go right here, so this arrow right here, this indicates that ramp down. So this is the ramp down, and then a lot of people are going to turn right. If you're in the repair area, as you turn right from that ramp down, this is the area. Right here is where one of those drains were. 
right here is one of those drains where um, this is down and then this is up. Right here is building two. So if you concentrate on this area right here, go into the right, that's where the main repair areas are going to be. We're taking all that traffic coating out. We're removing all the drains. We're adding new drains. We're probably going to add three or four more new drains so that we can sump. I think I have a photo. Uh, this is detailed. So instead of having the volcano going up, we're actually going to have a sump going down, so hopefully we're draining properly. Um, we know we have cracks underneath the coating. We know we have some areas that are low spots, right? You guys have seen the ponding already. Um, we're going to be building those up so we can, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better from what's there. So we go back to here, we're going to have, we're removing all the traffic coating. Um, there's going to be a specialty contractor in there who's going to be grinding everything up, who's going to be shot blasting everything, getting all the traffic coating that's on there right now off. Concrete topping, slope leveling repairs. We know we're going to be routing and sealing cracks, repairing cracks. Replacing the two drain assemblies that are there, adding three or four new ones. And when all that's done, we're going to review everything, make sure that the surfaces are, are ready for application of new traffic coating. We're starting from scratch, essentially, because uh, we know that there's a lot of water. We know that cars drag in a lot of salts. We know that there's going to be um, dumpsters come in and out of there every day. Um, so we want to make sure that that area is done right. And then after we're all said and done, um, National is going to put the same striping that was there. You're going to have the same numbers. Hopefully, it's going to look exactly the same as it did before, except it's going to be a lot cleaner. <laughs> um, so, does anyone have any questions about the scope, the area repairs in this area? Does this make sense? Everyone know where this is located? Are you going to close that completely during the day? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, I, I, that's what's my question. Okay. Is there be one and one yeah. So I'll, I'll show you that when we get to the phasing plan here. So the building two repairs, um, we'll talk about that. So as building two repairs, this is coming down. We're going to the right. And then all this area back here. That's what we're calling the building two repairs. That's the maintenance repairs. That's not resulting in water leakage now, but within the next year or two, the association was going to recode all that anyway. So since we're already doing all this right now, we're also going to take care of this as well. And it's going to be a much less expensive repair because it's not at the point where we have to remove the existing traffic coating. So we call it a recode. Um, so we're going to clean everything nice. We're going to remove any delaminated or loose areas. We're going to be very minimal. Um, route and seal any visible cracks, provide a new overcoat coating, which will um, result in the same warranty as even the area where we're um, performing the, the replacement system. And then same thing, new traffic markings to match existing. Um, and then this is the area right here. So right here, you're coming in the ramp to the right, and then all this area here. So the repair schedule and the phasing plans. This is what everyone most important about. Is everyone everyone okay with the building one and building three areas here? Just those couple of spots. Go ahead. Why don't you do one building at a time instead of two different phases on each building? So are you talking about the the, really, the, blue, what, the blue and the green? The blue and the green. Yeah. So the blue and the green. The reason we're doing that is so that we can leave one side open. So we can't do one if we did one building at the same time. If we did only one building once, we'd be closing that. And so we, we don't want to eliminate you know, the extra 40 spots that are in there. So to keep their guys busy, what we're going to do yeah. is to do so half. You know, in each building in those upper garages, there's not 40 spots. There's 20. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, talk, I'm talking about this right here. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm asking about. Does anyone have an issue with this that or this? That's the building one. Why okay. You know, that's what I'm saying. There's only 20 spots in that garage. We're, we're, we're not doing anything else in this area except for right near the garage door. The building one. You can still go in and out yeah. of the building. So, so the, on one side. Correct. Because you're going to do both sides, correct? Well, correct. Both but so, the door. so this right here. Yeah, we're only. That's what I'm saying. Why not? We're, we're only doing work. So this is building three, the same thing as building one. There's going to be times where half of this area is going to be inaccessible. People Fine. can't go in and out at the same okay, time. Okay, so you finish that side. Correct. Then just move to the other side and do it. 
That's what we're doing. But we're doing it concurrently. So we're doing. So you're doing building three and building one concurrently. Concurrently. So we're doing the left side of building one, the left side of building three. We get done at those at the same time. The right side of building one, the right side of building three. We finish both buildings at the same time. We move on to the main area. Is that why it's taking ten days? That's correct. Side? Quite frankly, it's such a small area, but what we're doing is we have to excavate it. We don't know exactly what we're going to find. We based our drawings, we based our details off of a couple of things. The original architectural details, the original structural details, and the original concrete shop drawings. We know for a fact that one of the three are wrong. We don't know which one because they don't all match. So we don't know exactly what we're going to find until we open it up. And so that's where the big pit comes in. Once, once, we, once we demolish everything out in front right here, and that's going to be right here. If this is the garage door right here, yeah. there's going to be the big pit right in this area right here. Ron and I are going to climb down in that pit. We're going to say, you know what, that makes sense. That shows exactly what we thought it was going to be. We have a pretty good idea. We probably have a 90% idea of exactly what we want to do, but we can't specify yet. And so we both get down there, we talk to the board and say, this is what we're going to do. Um, so once that's there, once we know exactly what's what with a restoration project, you don't know what you have until you know you have it. You know, until you get down, you actually see it for yourself. We're making best guesses right now. You know, I think we're 90% confident, but um, we're not 100 until we go down and see it. So that's why it's going to take a little bit longer because we're going to have a day where we're just down there investigating both sides. Then we're going to have another day once that gets repaired, once we decide what we're going to do, the next day they're going to come out and repair it. The day after that, we're going to test it. Before they start infilling anything, we're going to test it to make sure that those repairs don't leak before we infill that back in. So when you do dig down, are you going to be able to see to the lower garage if there might be any issues with that? We are going to be able to see. Like a building one. I'll, I can show you the picture of building three. Well, three is. So this is this is building this is building three, right? We're going to be digging down probably to about right here. As you can see, it this is the joint. We're going to be digging down at least two inches below the joint. Now, when it comes to building one, we're going to be digging down even lower because now we have one joint here. And we have another joint yeah. here. We have to get around, correct. We're going to be digging down at least two feet below this joint. Okay, so that would be in the, uh, the first phase. That's that? correct. Okay. So our anticipation. So check, okay. Yep. I didn't know if you were checking below. So our anticipation, again, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this, you know, a little bit later on, but for better or for worse, there, this schedule is probably going to change. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. We're, we're giving you our best bet now. And we're going to communicate any changes with you. Hopefully, it goes quicker. You know, I mean, that's 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 our best hope. Um, but at least so people can start seeing the general idea of when cars will have to be moved, when you're going to be impacted. This is a start. On the building one and three driveway on the, on the street level, are you pretty confident that the part that the, the width of the half? You know, as you divide that doorway in half, if there's enough room for a car to get in and out of Small it? car. What do you mean a small car? I mean, it's, it's, it's. I mean, I have a tremendous it's, it, it's, it's going to be tight. There's enough room. Yeah, okay. I mean, it. You don't know how many. I mean, a normal car. There, there's, there's going to be enough room. I mean, yes. I, I just, it's going to be tight. You're going to be going, you know, the. Most people go in the middle, you're all right, you know, I mean, because there's usually not someone coming in and out. It's just every time now you're going to have a construction horse on one side and you're going to have the door jam on the other. So instead of a 16 wide opening, foot wide opening, you're going to have an 8 foot wide opening. So it, it'll, it'll be wide enough to get a car through, it's just going to be tight. And again, that's what we're saying. If people are not comfortable parking or doing that for you know a couple weeks, that's why we're letting you know now. We're doing this in a way to hopefully minimize the inconvenience, but at the same time being realistic that it is going to be a tight fit. It's not going to be what everyone's used to. Um, and we'll talk about what the alternate parking arrangements will be um, for those cases. So that even if you are, if your parking spot is back here and you're not affected by the work, you may want to move. Um, you know, and that's a personal decision for everyone. Um, 
Any other questions about the building one and building three repairs? Did you say you were also replacing the ceiling coat in one and three on the upper levels as well? Are you doing that? We are not. No patch, no numbers. Correct. So as of right now, and again, that's that's probably going to be you know a, a maintenance project. Um, you know, doing the, the coating in here all the way back. But you know, there's only you know certain budget for a certain time and you know to try and relocate everyone now just wasn't going to happen so we weren't going to go there. I have a Lieberman question. Um, so what are you going to do about the trash collection? Because certainly the truck isn't going to be pulled right up and then they pull it out. So. We'll actually talk about that in a bit. All right. we've, 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 come up with some contingency plans. Okay, um, now we'll talk about this common area, um, building three, this area right here. And again, this goes back to this main area right here, we're coming in. This whole area is gonna be completely torn up. There's gonna be um, big machines in there pulling everything up. There's gonna be shot flat, little, little metal balls shot blasting basically getting a surface profile ready for the new coating. Um, it's not going to be pretty. We're not going to want anyone walking through there during working hours as well. Um, what I'm going to try and show you is this. The idea right now is that this red area is going to be performed first. The reason being is that we know that there's also people who park all the way down this way, right? Right. So people down here, there's no traffic coating down in this area. The idea is, is that you're probably not on any of these days ever going to be able to get through here during work hours. You know, there's going to be shot blasting going on. There's going to be heavy machinery. It's going to be very difficult during work hours. But the idea being is that after work hours, we're going to try our best, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, but to be able to allow people to get through that way. Yeah, the plan is to always allow a lane of traffic through the work areas. Correct. Always. So that's why we have it split up in a red and an orange. So we have this red right now. So the unfortunate 10 or 11 people who park right here, we have that time down from right after Labor Day to the end of the project. Even though this is going to be done relatively quickly, um, I think the, the timing on that was maybe a week or somewhere seven work days, something like that. The problem is, is that you're never going to be able to pull your car out and not be in the other work zone. So that's the reason we have this marked as red, is that you're not gonna be able to pull in and pull back out without interfering with area work going on. It may change, we may be able to move that date up. So people who are in this, this red zone right now, the 10 or 11 cars, it may not actually be, you know, uh, September 7th to November 12th, which is about five weeks. We want to give you the worst case scenario. And so I apologize to anyone in this room, you know, who, who parks there. Go ahead. What about access to the storage units? So access to the storage units, Same thing. when there's going to be a couple days where it's going to be absolutely off limits. So I'll tell you this, when, when the coatings are wet, and it'll be clearly marked, marked off with, you know, is it going to be uh, horses and uh, tape probably? Uh, barrels and uh, yeah. flags, yeah, around the work area. So yeah. will we be notified ahead of time when that's getting done, or should we prepare? Yeah, well, I, I think that's a great question. I think we could probably do a better job of honing down when you will not be able to walk into the storage areas, because there definitely will be a couple days that you will not. But it doesn't. It definitely does not mean that from nine seven to ten twelve that you won't have access to storage areas at that location. What are the work hours? Uh, work hours are eight probably to four thirty. It's a four thirty generally, and we'll talk about that some more as well. Um, all right. So now we're going to go to this other area. This right here. We're probably not anticipating starting this until we get done with this red area. So that's why we're saying here it would be 9, uh, 18 to, 9, to 10, uh, 12. Now with that said, we're going to have the same problem 
with pulling in and out, so that's probably going to change. So anyone who is here or here, we're probably going to have some overlap. It might be moved up a little bit for those times when you know we're actually working over here, we're coating the concrete that you're not going to be able to get out. And we're just going to have to communicate that in advance. So again, for anyone who's in here or here, there's probably going to be a little bit of overlap. And quite frankly, you're probably going to want to consider moving your cars from here just due to all the dust and debris that's going to be occurring on this side. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those, you know, park at your own peril, but we are going to recommend that everyone here move out while the work here is going on. Now, with that said, this is the area directly below building two and the majority of the spaces that are going to be impacted. And so, again, just to trace you through, this would be the ramp down. Then you're going to turn right, then you're going to turn up left, and then this is the entire area. This is going to be the overcoat area. Like I said, the problem with everyone who parks up here is that if your parking spot is here to get out, you're going down, and then you're here in the main work area. So in order to get through to the main work area and get out, it's going to be tricky. Now again, like we said, the idea is, is that we're hoping to keep one lane of traffic open, you know, after hours, but there's going to be some tight turn radiuses with the columns there. Um, and we're going to highly recommend that everyone get out of these spaces from mid-September to mid-October. And the reason being is that it's going to be very difficult as you get down here when work is going down to not interfere with any of the wet coating that's down below. So that's why we're asking everyone to even move out of this area in advance. And when everyone's moved out, National is going to be able to move up and to be able to work concurrently on this area with the coating and this area as well. So that's the idea. We don't want to split up this gold area here and this area here. We want to be able to do it all at the same time. That's why we thought about it that, you know, maybe we could hold this off. We just want to do everything and give them the opportunity to be as efficient as possible, and maybe even shave some days off the schedule. Go ahead. No. Are you not doing anything on the very lowest level? We are not. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that just means you can't get out, though. You can't get out. No, right. Right. So, so I'll go back and, and so here's the thing, you, you will be able to, if you're on the lower level, as you come in this ramp, right, you go straight down, you will be able to get in and out unimpeded. So anyone who works down here, and here, here's the reason, the reason why the traffic coding is here is because we have cars down below. You know, we don't have anything down below because the idea is, is that we have this waterproof coating up above to protect everything from falling water and ice and everything else, but the coating they have right now is not doing that job. Mm -hmm. What I will say to you is there will be work right along this edge. Oh, yeah. During work hours, there will be shot blasting and everything else, so you know, during those hours of 8 to 4.30, feel free to get your car out before hours or after hours, but you know, during, during that time, if you don't feel comfortable driving, just move your car out ahead of time. <clears throat> Anything else about the phasing schedule or the, the schedules that we have laid out right now? Um, just so you guys know, these two that we have in front of you, like I said, Angela, I could show you as well. So we have this, and we have this. We printed out 100 today. Um, the anticipation is that you guys can bring some extras home for your neighbors. Uh, I'm sure Martha and Sybil will be posting them at the locations. Um, We'll talk about where they're going to be. I think they're going to be in common areas and elevators. Um, they are going to change. This is our first best guess to at least get you guys thinking about it. Uh, but they are going to change. Anytime they do change, we'll send out an email 
Uh, I'm sorry, Michelle will send out email blasts and we'll also update hard copies elsewhere in the common areas and the elevators. I would just try to delineate better where the ramp is and how, you know, the doors, garage doors in and out because of people who aren't here who may not understand this and they're looking at this on a bulletin board. Um, we, we can do that. And you know what, that's a great idea. I talked with Sybil about that earlier. Um, you know, I appreciate your input. I think that's what we're going to do is we're going to do some in and out arrows so um, people know exactly what the traffic pattern is. Um, all right, schedule. Um, you know, we talked about mobilization is going to be August 14th. I think on here we have um, the 15th as the date range. The demolition is going to start on the 15th. A um, couple weeks away. Approximately 10 week construction schedule. The schedule will change. I, I can't emphasize that enough. You guys are holding on to this. You know, a month from now, I can guarantee you it's probably old. You know, we are going to update it. Hopefully, hopefully things progress faster than, you know, what's shown. Um, it may not. Um, unanticipated conditions, you know, we're going to do our best to, um, you know, keep you guys in the loop. Um, schedule updates will be, be provided. We've talked about that again. We've been planning this project for over a year now. We've decided the best thing to do is to make sure any schedule changes are at least you guys are afforded 48 hours of advance notice. And during that time, there will be updated schedules posted in common areas, in elevators, and also emailed out. Um, phasing, we talked about this in the phasing plans. The work on the south elevations of Building 1 will be completed first. Um, One-way traffic access will be provided into and out of the garages during the construction. Again, that's an eight, uh, approximately eight-foot construction path uh, for cars. Uh, there will be temporary barricades, traffic cones, tape. Um, you know, large cars will have difficulty maneuvering, not necessarily in straight lines, but especially in that Building 3 common area where we are going to have to get around um, those columns. Construction hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., probably closer to 4.30, maybe a little bit sooner. Um, workers will mobilize prior to 8 o'clock, so we've talked, you know, um, some of these guys are coming from, you know, Indiana or, you know, far western suburbs, you know, they're going to make sure that they're on time, let them know they can mobilize, you know, uh, probably normally about 7.30, I think. I would think so. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna range. Um, but we ask them not to make noise. You know, we're not gonna be starting generators or anything starting eight o'clock. But they might start getting some of their tools together, stuff like that. Um, you guys will always know who's at the site. If it's RJ at the site, we always wear um, our safety gear, which is a hard hat with an RJ logo. Um, also, a, a yellow uh, construction vest with an RJ logo on the back. Um, NRS workers will be wearing bright yellow clothes with the NRS logo as well. Um, and I anticipate you're going to have most of the same workers there um, throughout the project. Yes. Yep. Um, material equipment, drop off, pick up, um, probably not going to affect everyone, but there will be some you know, significant um, trucks coming through probably three or four times during the project. Be prepared for noise and dust, especially if you are in the garage at any time. Um, I've seen people walk the garage before for exercise. I would highly recommend you guys don't do that during the project. Um, generators, generators are very loud. Um, I, it's, I, I don't believe we'll be using any of the building's electricity. Um, Nash, I can't emphasize this enough, is NRS is responsible for site safety. Um, you know, if, if their workers or Ron or anyone sees something that is not safe, you know, it's their responsibility to let you know. So use your heads, but you know, I mean, they are responsible for the site safety, um, and, and they will let you know if there's, uh, you know, something unsafe or um, you guys need to do something else. Um, we anticipate hearing about it. Michelle will hear about it as well. The idea is we want a, a completely safe work site, um, and they're going to be um, keeping the site clean and safe for everyone as well. Um, there will be a portable restroom probably located toward the southwest corner of the building. Um, we haven't um, figured out the exact place yet, but um, near building one, near that um, garage entrance, there will be a little staging area probably with some materials and um, portable restroom, a couple things like that. So. Do you recommend that we put things underneath our storage doors during this 
I'm, my that would be a good idea. In, my space is the, first, is the third one in from the building three. That would be a great so idea. Put something underneath there to keep the dust out? I would. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Buildings one and three on the main level there, where you're just doing the door, uh, will weather have an effect on what you're doing? I mean, it will. Pouring and if it's pouring, we won't be working. Uh, you know, I mean. Will the garage door at any time, will that be operational or will it just be open all the time? It'll, it'll be open during the work, I, I would anticipate. During the work hours, yeah. If we're working there, we'll have the garage open. Um, parking, you know, we talked about this, I think, at length. Um, you know, consider moving cars from the garage. Um, the, uh, the board has arranged for alternate parking. Um, Sybil, do you want to talk about where that parking's at? Um, yes, um, we haven't actually arranged that because the um, phone call hasn't happened yet. But um, we are going um, I've, I've been in touch with the village about parking in the village garage since that is the closest place that we can get enough parking. And I will also be in touch with the police department about the fact that people will be parking on the streets and probably staying overnight. And um, they tend to turn a blind eye to that when they know that work is, is coming on. So I've, I've started that whole process. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the village will want that. Yeah. yeah, no question about it. They'll so be we'll make it passes, and um, right now I can't tell you whether they will provide passes or we will provide passes, but we will make sure that they're available to everybody. So more, more information is forthcoming, but you know, the, the, the board has been in the process and will continue to be in the process of making sure there is um, you know, alternate parking. Even if you don't plan to move your cars permanently, um, you'll consider moving your cars if you have important appointments or you know you have to be out at a certain time. Um, you, know, you just never know what's going to happen with a construction project. You, you may get blocked in. You know, there, there, there's no promises with a project like this. <coughs> Um, if a car is not moved, um, you know, we'll have no choice but to tow the car, unfortunately, um, and reimburse National for a day of, of not working if, if they're supposed to be in there, and I don't think anyone wants that. Um, trash and dumpster. So the trash specifically for Building 2, um, what we talked about is that there's going to be at least two days um, where the trash will not be able to be taken out or we're going to have to close the chutes. Um, we decided it's probably going to be the best that they happen on a Tuesday and a Thursday um, so that, you know, after a weekend, the trash will be taken out on a Monday and, you know, same thing on a Friday. Um, and then by not having a Tuesday and Wednesday back-to-back -back days, we don't have everything being backed up. So that's, we don't know the exact days right now, but it's probably going to be sometime in, in late September or early October where there may be a, uh, a Tuesday and a Thursday, or maybe a, you know, a couple additional days um, where those shoots will be closed and you guys will be notified ahead of time. The idea being is that, you know, uh, Ron's been out to the site, he's tracked the garbage men, believe it or not, to <laughs> make sure he knows, you know, where they, where they go and what they do. Um, you know, so, I mean, we've, we've been looking at it. I, 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 I can't tell you that we're, we have a perfect solution yet, but we, we have been looking at, at these items. <laughs> But building one and three, it's not going to be too big of an issue, again, because there's always going to be one side of the uh, garage that's always going to be open. Um, so, you know, although trucks don't back in there, they will be able to wheel the, uh, the five-yard dumpsters out without any issue. Um, but obviously, with building two, um, they have a long way to wheel that out. Um, and when we do have wet traffic going in there, we just can't, we can't wheel it out. So, um, it's, this is a multi-coat system. Um, there will be a couple days where I just can't move that dumpster. We'll probably be closing the chutes. Um, we have also talked about, it's probably a long shot, but since we are going to have that staging area near the um, southwest corner of the property, um, near the garage door of building one, uh, potentially, you know, providing a temporary dumpster there, you know, if, if it gets to a point where, where we feel it. But I, I think we've got to a point now where we can just close those trash chutes and, and be done with it. Um, this isn't going to be the end of that conversation. I can guarantee you that Michelle will be in contact with you 
um, you know, at least a week in advance of any final decisions. And of course, this is going to be several months away from now, um, and we'll better update because um, the schedule will change, right? So, um, just a couple of final things on what to expect. You know, construction projects are not perfect. Uh, again, I can't give enough credit to the board and Michelle and Andy, um, you know, for helping us. You know, again, just trying to plan. You know, plan, 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 plan. But it's it's not going to be perfect. We're going to run into unanticipated conditions. There are going to be some changes. There are going to be inconveniences. Um, unexpected issues will arise. We're going to do our best to minimize those impacts um, for the unit owners and the residents. Um, and we're going to try to do our best to uh, communicate effectively. Um, you know, I think the project team that we have now, we've done a great job. And you know, the final piece of the puzzle is communicating with, with all of you. Um, I think we have the right pieces in place to uh, do that. Um, we talked about this, the, uh, the scheduling. Um, all those phasing schedules will be up at three locations, well, two locations, um, and then issued electronically. So anytime there's a change on our end, you guys will be notified. Um, we talked about probably about 48 hour rule. If we do know that there's gonna be change, we have to forecast that 48 hours in advance, you guys know. Um, please communicate directly with, with Michelle, um, as much as you guys might grow to like me or Ron, um, <laughs> or hate us, you know, whatever, whatever, if you, if you hate me, please tell Michelle. Uh, there, there's just certain lines of communication um, on a construction project like this, and, and it helps everyone. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me if, if Michelle has five updates every day from, from different people or different questions, we'll get them answered. Um, but it makes it a lot easier if they're routed through Michelle and then Ron and I can powwow after the fact. Um, thank you, um, not just for being here tonight, but thank you in advance um, for dealing with the inconvenience that you're going to have to deal with. Um, the board fully recognizes um, that there will be inconveniences for a lot of people. Um, but hopefully we've done our best to try and minimize those the best that we can and hopefully we'll continue to do so for the next several months. Um, and we really couldn't do this without everyone's cooperation. Um, so everyone who's here today and everyone who will be seeing this over the next couple of days, uh, make sure everyone watches this video, okay? Um, but seriously, I mean, this is it's, it's total team effort. Um, you know, we do a lot of condominium work. Ron does a lot of work with condominiums. There are, the most successful projects are the ones where we can we can all work together. You know, not where it's it's uh, you feel like you know people are fighting amongst one, one another. There are people who are going to be upset. There are people who are going to be happy. I can I can see it already in this room. Um, but ho hopefully, I, I've learned that you know as long as we can be you know as open and honest with our communication as possible. Um, that'll that'll start everything on the right track. So I appreciate everyone's time, and Ron and I are available for any additional questions you have. What's the site to see? The video. The video. What's that? How do you look up the video? So Angela's going to explain um, the video. She's on. Uh, I think it's going to be on Lieberman's website. Um, correct, and Michelle will send out a communication oh, to okay. you, um, telling you how to find it. Thank you. One other thing, we are gonna we are gonna issue um, PDFs of these to everyone. Michelle will issue those, and we're also gonna issue a PDF of this presentation should anyone wanna reference it. One, one thing, just to point out for you guys, sure. that with the new bar that opened right next door to Building Three, oh, yeah. City, when they get their deliveries, their semis block half that driveway. Yeah. You might want to yeah. just communicate with them because they like I said when they get their beer deliveries and stuff they literally block okay. out that driveway. Gotcha. That's a, that, we appreciate that heads up. With two or three food trucks uh, yeah, this, is still okay. this is sort of related to that. What about the moving in and moving out? Um, especially if it's an 18 wheel moving truck. That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> what was the answer, Michelle? We're still in the process of discussing. Okay, gotcha. Thank and you. Then, uh, what about the like ABT as the appliances are being replaced? Just right, the rule is you're supposed, you're supposed to take it down through the lower level. Right. Right. We all think announcements about that. Yeah. We're going to have to make some allowances and changes. Yeah. Just temporarily. Will you be working on weekends? Probably not. No. Same with parking in the courtyard. Same with space. You know, 
It, and you know what, I mean, the good thing is, and quite frankly, it's going to be the biggest inconvenience for the parking. You know, I mean, it really is. When, when it comes to walking through the garage after hours and stuff like that and, and, and things, I mean, the, the only times you can't walk there, quite frankly, is was when it's wet. And there's only a couple days in a couple areas where the coatings would be wet because it is a multi-coat system. Um, but, but days where they're doing surface prep afterwards, yeah, there's going to be some rocks on the floor and stuff like that, but it doesn't mean you can walk down or wheel something out afterwards. It's going to be a matter of, um, you know, where we exactly are in the construction process from demolition all the way to the recoding. So after, after 430, you'll, other than the multi-coat portion of it, you can drive your car through those areas. And, and park it in that in those spots, right? That, no, not necessarily, because there. I mean, there's honestly for for warranty requirements. Um, after the surface prep is done, um, you know, it's got to be clean. I mean, it's got to be clean. You know, there can't be cars um, driving through it, potentially bringing dirt and debris from outside. I mean, um, you know, it, it's ready to go. So the idea behind you know these right here is that during that time frame we don't want anyone parking in those spots now when it comes to going through that area yes if they're not going to be working um, you know for instance when they're working in this red area right here this area will probably all be cordoned off so you'd have to go around that way there right to go to the back side but any area where there's active work, it'll be completely closed down to any cars that would be parked there, or any cars that would be parked beyond there. And we'll have barricades and flags up identifying these areas, so it's it's clear where to go and where not to go. But there'll always be a traffic lane allowed through the work area. But that's what I'm saying. My my spot is beyond this spot, these spots here. So. So at the at at the end of the day, I'll be able to bring my car in. Absolutely. Along yeah. the yes, the you know back side of the yeah. So you're saying your car is below building three? That that right in here? Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's right. Any anyone who would park in this area, no, even if there's no work going in. But that's the idea. As we know, that there's 30 or so additional spots that back this way. And that's why we're phasing it in such a manner that we're not going to be affecting those spots. Um, but you may at some point go through this way. On other days, you may go through that way. Right. And you're going to have to follow NRS's directions. Okay, that's fine. Where, it, this ends now at 50. So if I have 49, this ends at 50. So, so there's a... The wall, wall right there. there? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have 50, I have actually 50 and 49. Okay. And there's no wall between them. The wall is at the end of 50. You have 49 and 50. Yes. Well, let me go back and check on that. And maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> I'll check on that, make sure we have the numbering correct. So, but if I'm in this area, it's best to just keep the car out. That you, you'll have to, yeah. Keep the car out until December. Uh, no, until the middle of October. It says here 12-17. Uh, 10-12-17, so October 12. 10-12-17. Yep. So that's why the construction schedule is only going to be nine weeks total, okay. somewhere around there. Yeah. Said ten, but well, will there be room in the city garage for all of us to park there? There's. We're looking into it right now. We're thinking that at certain points there might be sixty to seventy cars displaced, and that's what the board is looking into right now. That there's going to be room for the majority of people. Yeah, I will. I'd rather not drive through the construction. Yeah. I'd rather just keep the car out the whole time. And we'll have updates with regard to parking, because we do know that there could potentially be a lot of people out. Okay. Do you anticipate doing any work on the B2 level, the lower level under building two? We do not. 
and access to that would be subject to the same things that you were discussing? No, actually, that there will be no issues with access there. Because this you're talking about as you come in these doors, right. as you go down. Right. The only work area will be from this joint over. So as long as you're just entering, going down, going up, going down, anywhere down below, you shouldn't have any issues at all. But, but you, you're working on that. Oh, you're working on the upper We're portion. working, we'll be working above. Okay. Right. And there, there's, there's, yeah, I mean, honestly, you, you may get some dust coming through yeah. joints and holes and be prepared for that, but from a coming in and out, you shouldn't have any issues. Yeah, I have, a, I guess, a, a suggestion. Since you're talking about when you have to drive past the construction area, it's be very narrow and tight, would it be possible to perhaps put up a mock Flat off so people could try to get their cars around and then they could anticipate whether they were able to maneuver their cars. Yes, we'll have barricades up the whole time. So I'm saying right, before delineating the, the driveway. No, 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 I'm saying beforehand so they would so someone who has to drive a mock up. Oh, to do a test. To do yes. a test and then test. they can't maneuver their sure. car. Then they, they know that and they'll have to get it out. We, we could certainly do that if you like. The first day that we start on uh, buildings one and three. We could bring some barricades and set them up as we would when the space starts to leave it there to see how comfortable everyone is that ready to be helpful. there. Okay. okay. And another good reason for that is we don't want any significant damage done to the door frames. Understood. That, that could happen very easily. Correct. <laughs> yep, cars or door frames. And that, I, I understand. I mean, it is a big difference going from 16 feet to 8 feet. I mean, cars will fit, but it's, it's going to be tight. Anything else? Go ahead. If you give them due consideration to the uh, fire lanes, that they're not going to be blocked in any way, so the trucks or ambulances can get through. Fire lanes outside? Yeah, I mean we're not. We're, we're, we, well, it, for instance, the doorway for Building Three, the garage doorway, mm -hmm. that is adjacent to a fire lane. Mm -hmm. And will your work? protrude far beyond the door? Where it will it not. Interfere with the fire lane? Where we're anticipating going maybe four to five feet beyond the garage door. See, as it is now, there this, are this picture is here. Correct. So you're you're only talking about being probably, right here. Oh, uh, probably right where this is. So this is the fire lane. That's correct. The truck is open. You're not no. going to go beyond those curves. No, that's correct. Um, Probably the best way to real quick. So this is the garage door right here. You can see this little dashed line. We are just coming out a couple feet. Yeah, you know, that's the idea. Building one's gonna be a little bit larger because we gotta come down and we have to. The idea is, Ron, correct me if I'm wrong, but we want to make sure that our pits are at least as wide as they are tall, correct? So if, if we're excavating down four and a half feet, we want our pit to be at least four and a half feet wide. Yes. So so that's the idea. Is you know, I mean we're we're only digging down, you know, building one about four and a half feet and building three probably closer to three feet. So building three we're only gonna be coming out about three feet and then building one will be coming out about four and a half. Um, thank you guys for your time. Any other questions, feel free to follow up with Michelle. I'm sure uh, we are all going to be in touch on many occasions between now and uh, August 14th. Um, like I said, don't, don't feel free to, to reach out. We know this is a, uh, an interesting process. We hope to make it as convenient for you as possible, even though it's not possible. So. Painless, that'd be nice. Um, but thanks again for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.